Okay, uh, I think we already start. Um, I would like to welcome everybody to this very special evening at the Baumus Zentrale. Uh, we are really a lot of people, so please uh, get compact and uh, fill up the gaps so that most people can profit as much from this lecture. Uh, before we start, I just want to have a short, uh, quick look at our upcoming program in the Baumus Zentrale. Next uh, week, we have a brown bag lunch uh, at Thursday lunchtime. There will be Stahltom Bauteile AG together with FFB Car Architects. They will uh, present a project in the Dreischwitz Areal in Basel, which is made out of, the facade is made out of uh, glass, fiber, concrete elements. So this will be next Thursday at lunchtime. Also next Thursday, we have a new event that is called Material Talk, that is together with our supporting association, the Freunde Baumuste. They invited Erika Fries from Huckenberg Fries Architects, and she will talk about wooden shingles here. That will be next Thursday at 6 p.m. So if you are interested, please subscribe. Uh, via email address for this event next Thursday. Yes, and uh, tonight we, we are extremely pleased to welcome Alberto Viega tonight. He is uh, he founded Barozzi Vega Architects in 2004 together with Fabrizio Barozzi. And since then they performed uh, a very impressive international career. They had projects in uh, all over Europe, in Poland, in uh, Italy, in Spain, of course, and uh, also in Switzerland, as you know. And uh, since then, they also won many prizes among the Mies van der Rohe Prize for European Architecture uh, in 2015 for the Philharmonic Hall in Stettlin in Poland, a uh, project which was widely published, you will certainly know, and I think we are going to see it in the lecture too. More recently, they could finish the Bündner Kunstmuseum in Chur, and uh, they have two more ongoing projects in Switzerland, which is the uh, Musée de Bosa in Lausanne, and also the Tanz House here in Zurich. So for us, this is a, we have so many reasons to invite uh, Alberto Vega here tonight. So um, we are really curious to hear more from you in your lecture. Uh, when we look at uh, Barozzi Vega's work, I mean, uh, one thing, on the projects they all got in common is a really profound and a really precise uh, lecture of the uh, and analysis of the site, and um, I think they kind of achieve always to, to squeeze out a, a very specific and uh, uh, dense atmosphere of every site they 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 build. They they call it in their own words uh, in their own words they call it a, a sentimental monumentality, and uh, we are looking forward to hear more from. Alberto, Alberto, about this topic in the next, I don't know, 50 minutes? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, just before I hand over to you, uh, I would uh, like to thank our sponsors. Uh, which is uh, Beton Swiss. Uh, concrete, of course, is a very important material in the work of uh, Barozzi Vega, as you will see. And uh, also we thank uh, AIM elevators. Uh, AIM elevators, they made the elevators for the project in, in Chur and also are involved in the project in Lausanne. It's a company which uh, really works together with architects to find 
special and custom-made solutions. We have Mr. Steiger here from Emch. Thanks for coming, and he did bring also this uh, this uh, Hochparterre extra Beilage. You can find it all over. Where is Mr. Steiger? Yes, here. If you have uh, questions to him, you can ask him afterwards. And uh, last but not least, we would like to thank Parkbook. Parkbook, they made this very beautiful publication about, and uh, together with Barozzi Vega, you can look at it here and you also can buy it uh, afterwards uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the, down there. Okay, so that's enough from me. I hand over to Alberto. Thank you. I feel the pressure now because it's crowded. I didn't expect so, so many people, really. <laughs> uh, well, th thanks for coming. Um, what I'm trying to do today is try to explain you this play of words, this sentimental monumentality, that this not, is not a statement, but it is mainly the way we feel the architecture that we do today. That's why, I, I mean, I, I know that today we are at Baumuster, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to explain the buildings, uh, telling you what you can see, because you understand drawings and concepts as me. I'm going to try to describe you the words or the concepts that we have been trying to uh, discover at our office uh, during the last years. And why we use this expression, this sentimental monumentality? Uh, since, since we started to work uh, 12 years ago, I don't know exactly why, but mainly all of our works have been related with fragile context, urban context, and public architectures. And these, these two ideas, I think, have been or have shaped somehow the way we work today. Fragile context, uh, urban context, then somehow has produced in our office an interest about this word, to be specific. Because if you can't be specific in a site, your work don't have, but can have any meaning. So this word specific has been very important for us since we started to work. And public, public because mainly we do competitions, always public competitions. And we have reflect a lot about this idea. So if you analyze these words to be specific and to work thinking about the idea of public, takes you directly to a classic discussion in architecture. I mean, this discussion about to find the balance between to be specific in a place to have a good relationship with the context, to have a good relationship with the environment, and to fight against your background, against your ego, and achieve something autonomous as architecture with meaning. So our fight during these years has, has been to find this balance between the specificity, specificity of the place and the autonomy of the form, the autonomy of the architecture. If you translate that, these words, to a kind of title, is the same than sentimental monumentality. Monumental, because with the work we do, what we try to find the link between past, present, and future, we use the expression monumental not because we are thinking in, in icons. We use the word monumental because we want to reflect about elements with meaning by itself within the urban context. That's a monument. And sentimental, because if you want to be specific, you need to achieve a sentiment-based relationship with your work within the site. You need to find a way to establish a perceptive relationship with the site, with the context, with the atmosphere. L later, we will talk about what means to be specific. But this sentiment-based relationship is the fundament of this um, challenge that we have with our work. 
to find this relationship. And to find this balance means, at the end for us, try to find or try to discover a work that can belong to a place, can be a specific, but at the end can belong to all places. This is our challenge as architects nowadays, to do something with meaning in a place, but with meaning by itself. And I like this expression, that to do something that belongs to a place, but at the same time belongs to all places. Because that's the real meaning of our work as architects, to discover an architecture with meaning by itself. And we try to express this in Venice with this installation, with this column. The title of the installation was Sentimental Monumentality. Because we as a work, I mean, you know how is the, how the Venice Biennale it is, so it's, it's like a showroom of uh, works by, by architects. And we didn't want to show our work, we just wanted to do something that could express this, this aim. And the column expressed somehow how we would work within the Arsenale if we could have this opportunity. Founding something with meaning by itself and with a sentiment-based relationship with the site. Uh, today I'm gonna show you five, no, four projects. Three Swiss projects and, and the Polish project, probably. Uh, because mainly, uh, well, the Swiss projects, of course, are, are, I mean, it makes sense to show you today these projects here in Switzerland, and I, we can talk a little bit about um, the difference between both. And the Polish project, because permits you to start talking about this, this word, uh, specific, to be specific. Or, I insist a lot in this word, because, I mean, Everyone, every one of you can, can do architecture with any shape. We can transform almost everything in architecture. And could, could, could be good buildings. Every, I mean, every student, every architect nowadays can transform something in architecture. But if you don't achieve the way to find this condition to be specific, and the work is going to be empty at the end. So we have been reflecting a lot about this during these years. And we did it in Poland at the beginning. I mean, this is a competition that we did uh, nine years ago. Our office is an office, I mean, Fabrizio, he's Italian, I'm Spanish. There are people working from different countries in our office. And, and we didn't know anything about Poland. We didn't know anything about stitching. So the question would be, what can we offer in stitching? What means to be specific if you don't know anything about this place? What means to be specific if you don't know the character, you don't know the atmosphere of this place? Uh, how do you approach the project without this close or closer relationship? And, well, this is a stitching, this is a mix of things, no? This is a mix of post-communist buildings, these neo-Gothic elements, these symbolic elements like the castle. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a mess, really, a statue. And this is more or less the atmosphere. And of course, when you approach the site, you discover, uh, you discover things. Like, okay, you, you, you can feel how the closer context works. This is our neighbor, you know, this is a police station. And you can discover, you can read elements from the West Pomerania architecture, you know, these massive volumes. You can feel the verticality of elements, the steep roofs, the rhythm of windows. I mean, there are always elements in a context that you can use uh, to try to discover a good relationship. You, 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 st you can read elements that permits you to be specific. And in this sense, this was uh, not easy, but was evident that within this atmosphere, we could find some tools to approach to, to the site. But to be specific for us is something more evolving. It's not enough just to have a good relationship with the, yeah, with the context. You, you, 
somehow should, we should go beyond this idea uh, to be specific means to achieve um, a good, I mean, meets, means to achieve the at, right attitude of a building. And there is a point always in our work where appears something, I, I like this sketch, this is a Fabricius sketch, and I like this sketch because, well, of course, this is one of the sketches that we do after the, after the building, after the project, okay? It's, it's not something, something that just happens. No, this appears always after. But expresses this idea that there is always a moment, there is always a moment in your work that you can't justify. There is something that you feel, there is a sentiment, there is an idea that based on this sentiment approach, sentimental approach, that you can justify. And if you mix this feeling somehow, and you, if you mix uh, this idea that you can feel in a side, if you try to take over your camera and try to analyze both approaches, you know, somehow you start to, like in stitching, to compose something. This is what we did here. Of course, to do a philharmony is something, it's not easy, but I mean, somehow, I, I, I am always joking about the office. I think it's, it's easier to do a philharmony than to do uh, a single family house, because uh, you can use a lot of metaphors, for example. Of course, we, we, we knew that we could use this metaphor of how to compose something, how to, how to understand something that is made by elements, how these elements could be related with the closer context, like, like here, now again, this idea of verticality, the steep roofs, the massive volumes, these simple tools that you can achieve, that you can find in a place. And this idea of how to compose something. But to be specific, means to rediscover or discover something that you sometimes don't expect. Right? This was the former site of the concert house too. Well, this, well, this is a statue. This is a very nice drawing. This, this is a houseman planning. And this, this corner, this small corner, was an important corner 50 years ago, before the, the Second World War. So the unexpected, yeah. Well, this is the corner, no? So the unexpected in this case, something that you don't expect when you start to work, is that the site, to be specific, tells you that somehow you need to do something that can transform this corner again, something important. For us, to read the context in this sense is, very, is, is something that we um, need to do. I mean, to be specific means to achieve the attitude, the right character of a building. This, this building tries to express this I mean, we didn't want to do an icon. The, the, the idea of be very expressive he, here came from this idea that this was a very important corner of this city. And we just want to recover this importance. We just want to transmit again that the Philharmony, this building in this place was important 50 years before us. Because we are just another layer. What we do is just another layer of architecture. We wanted to establish a link between the past, the present, and the future of this site. And we wanted to do something monumental, something with meaning, somehow. And this is how we felt that the building should be composed. Of course, this is a personal approach. Every one of you can have a personal approach, and could be better. But our personal approach, because you always have to filter uh, all this input through your eyes, through your sentiment-based um, perception, is what we translated here through our through these volumes. These volumes that are composed in a very simple way, because in stitching we knew that we didn't want to impose a kind of architecture that couldn't be understood by the people. We just wanted to activate somehow the discussion about the idea of architecture in the stitching. I mean, stitching, this was the first competition after 30 years as a public competition, you know, as a public building. And to activate somehow this discussion through our work was important for us 
since we started to work here. We wanted to compose something very expressive, very simple, very essential somehow, because for us it's important to condense this expressiveness in few gestures that can show the strength of idea. And we wanted to do it in a way that could activate this discussion with the citizens, because the Philharmonic without the citizens is nothing, it's just an empty envelope. And we wanted to do it not establishing a direct dialogue with the context. We wanted to show that this is a, a kind of new beginning at this place, but related somehow with, with the context. That's why we used we used a different material, a different way of expression. It was we didn't want to follow just come on. Mm. We didn't want to follow just this uh, this direct relationship with with our neighbor, and we condense all the expressiveness of the building at the rooftop. Uh, why? First, because we felt that was the right decision, of course. But then, because I mean, there are always simple elements at the site that you can use. You know, the, the building is surrounded by. Sounds obvious, but it's surrounded by trees. And, and we wanted to show that this is a new landmark, of course, but the building is always floating over this, this landscape. And we wanted to concentrate this, this, uh, this expressiveness, as I told you, at the top of the building, because the building is uh, as an endless element, because this is the kind of atmosphere that is typical in stitching. So this idea of endless element was important for us when we did the, the project too. And we used these small, obvious things when we work in a site. And that's to be specific for us. Try to achieve the character, try to achieve the attitude of the building, try to condense all these elements in something with meaning, as I told you before. Inside the building, it's very simple. I mean, at the end, it's a public building, Philharmonic. And we wanted to, yeah, we wanted to compose somehow a new square. The main uses of the buildings are two, two, mainly two concert halls. One concert hall for 1,000 people, the other one for 300 people. And then the back of the house, where all this stuff, you know, the restaurant, the wardrobes, I mean, all these things that you need always, of course, but these are not the main, the main uses. So what we decided was try to condense as much as possible, almost in a rational way, all this, this infrastructure and try to achieve the better public space that we could have inside. And inside we try to work with the same tools than outside, trying to be somehow trying to be a specific in terms of atmosphere, playing with the light. Uh, you can ask me, well, okay, this is Poland, you can't play with light. And that's, that's not true. I mean, there is an atmosphere always, and there is a way of work with light always. There is a feeling of light, a perception of light inside the building that people can relate with the mood or the atmosphere that they can feel outside too. But we wanted to do it using simple elements of architecture because when you go in to the building, when you go to a philharmony, the main thing is not, okay, for us, or for us architects, for us, it's very important to play with the proportion, to play with this idea of light, the stairs, how you compose the volumes, but this is not so important really for the citizens. They don't read the buildings as you. The most important thing is that the building Again, okay. then the building can have meaning when the people go in. Because the building for us here is just a background. This is the, it's almost as a theater. That's why we understood the building as a simple monolithic space that makes sense when it's full of people. It makes sense when you see the people moving through the stairs, when you see the people uh, waiting for a play. Because a philharmony is a place 
where you, not the most important thing, but one of the most, one of the most important things is to see who comes to attend the play, who comes with whom, who is going to go to. That's the, the questions that citizens can activate when they are into the building. And we wanted to do it. We wanted to express this, this need through the architecture. And we wanted to play with this idea. And in that sense, the building is public. Inside the building is a, it's almost in a street within a small square that you can cross and that you can use even with the concert, when the concert hall is closed. Because we, in this sense, we wanted to do a real public building and not just a nice box or a nice, a nice envelope. You have to help me again with, with the computer, right? Yeah. Here you can see how the concert halls are uh, composed somehow, two classical concert halls. Nine years ago, we didn't know anything about, oops. Yeah, well, nine years ago, we didn't know anything about how to do a philharmony. And during the competition, we were talking about what kind of, this is the heart of the building, no? So we didn't know exactly what kind of typology we could copy. And nowadays we have the same dots because we are doing some competitions now and we have the same dots. Now we need to investigate a new typology or not, or we should, or we should just rain, filter something through, through our intentions. And when we did this building, we didn't want to impose a new typology. We were conscious about our, our capacities. And, but we knew that the console hall, the main console hall, was the heart of this building. So we were thinking about how to transmit something special inside the building, how to be expressive as outside, how to condense something specific. Because inside, we work with the same tools, how to be specific inside, and how to somehow establish some link with past, present, and future inside too. Well, these are images of the interior of the building, how we played with. Now, this is the kind of image for architects, you know, to show, I mean, this is, this is not real too. You can feel this, you, it's not possible to see the skylight and the floor at the same time. But well, this expresses how the building works. And inside what we did with the console hall was try to uh, this is a classical concert hall. This is a two by one proportion. This is like the music bearing Saal or the Amsterdam Gebo. I mean, this is a classic typology. But we wanted to do something specific. And during the competition, we were investigating about uh, what happens in the stitching. I mean, what kind of tools we can use there. And we, we discovered this, this material. This, well, these are fake. These, these are just, just rem colors can, can do it with, with real gold leaves. These are fake gold leaves. That's why the, the brightness and, and the color is not the same like the Prada Foundation. But, but they know how to do it. They have the tradition. I mean, Poland is a very Catholic country, so they, can, they have the knowledge. And we knew it, because we had Polish collaborators at the office. No? But they, they know how to do it. And to use these tools in a place is to be specific to. I mean, to be specific is not just have a good relationship with, with your neighbor. To find the tools that you can use within the building in this sense and, and try to discover this link with the tradition was important for us within the concert hall. And the concert hall explores just this idea of how to express the uniqueness and the specificity of a play every time you go in. Because every time you go into this concert hall, every time is different. The play is different. We were very lucky because when you do a philharmony, you are doing a kind of instrument that plays in a different way every time you go in. 
So the space just tried to explore how to transmit this difference between, I mean, this difference talking about feelings when you go into the, into the concert hall. That's why we played with the natural light, with the gold leaves, and with this kind of geometry. Of course, all these elements are our obsessions. This is not, this is it's not related. This, this geometry makes no sense with something specific, of course. Makes sense with a lot of things, with the acoustics of the, of the concert hall, with, but makes sense because permits to explore the expressiveness of the material, permits to work with this idea of light, and permits to express then the space, well, then the space changes a lot in every perspective because of the light. It's completely different going into the concert hall during the spring, during the summer, during the winter. These are obvious elements, but for us, we're very important tools when we try to reflect about the building. And we try to be very expressive inside. We try to be, to show the strength of a simple idea because this made sense with something that later we discover that is this tradition of expressionism, that is a cultural tradition that really crosses the whole Europe and that is linked with the tradition is touching to. So for the citizens to discover an unexpected space like, like the concert hall within the, within the Philharmonie, was something that somehow could activate their memories too. Outside the building is, is simple too. It's, it's a way to express different faces. I mean, outside is glass and aluminum profiles using the techniques and the materials that we could use in a statue too. We couldn't use concrete and, and we, we did everything with with, with a steel structure and aluminum frames outside. And the building tries to, try, tries to play with this idea of light again outside. And why? Well, it's a classic resource to play with the light. But it's a classic resource because at the end, I'm going to use a word that is it's very important for me. When you do something as architect, what you need to transmit, what you want, what you really want, is to be sexy, because you need to attract people, and you need to transmit things to the citizens. And the building outside tries to, tries to attract people, tries, tries to activate the curiosity of the citizens, and tries to tell you that something is going on when you see the light from the outside, and tries to transform the perception that you have of the building during the day, this kind of iceberg or this ice cube, and when you see the building during the night, or when you see the building during the evening, because the, it's a public building, and and the, the building needs to attract people, needs needs to activate the curiosity of the people, and in this sense, we use this simple tool of light. At the end. This is the building. Well, this is the stitching. Is, is this a Polish building? In, the, in talking about specificity, it's, it's not a Polish building. It is an Italian, Spanish, Polish building. No. From my point of view, it's in a stitching building. It's a, it's, a, it's a building that makes sense here at this corner, but makes sense when you see this kind of elements, when you see this color when you see this light, the building makes sense just at this corner. And in this sense, it's specific. But it's not a Polish building. That's not the, the fact. I mean, what is important is to achieve the right attitude in a specific place. The second one is the museum in Kur. We won the competition in Kur after, really this was the second competition that we won in Switzerland, the first one was in Lausanne, and yeah, we did this competition, um, well, we did this competition as young architects. We were young when we did the competition. 
And as, as you must know, I mean, we had to do the extension of, of this villa, Villa Planta. That is a very, no, well, I don't have the references. Well, Villa Planta is a very strange building. I mean, it's, I don't know if you, you know the building, but just at the heart of the city in Kur, there is this strange villa surrounded by sequoias, these huge trees, and full of strange elements, full of strange ornament. I mean, because the former owner of this villa, he, he was a rich commerciant, and he did his fortune in Egypt or in some places around Africa. And he wanted to translate somehow his dreams into the city, into Kur. So he decided to somehow copy uh, Palladian Villa, like Villa Rotonda. And he decided to fill the villa with a lot of ornament. And that's nice. I mean, the result is very charm. I mean, if you go in, you feel somehow uh, you fall in love with the place because it's this combination, this is strange combination at the heart of Kur of strange ornament and this this clear relationship with a um, with a Palladian villa somehow made sense. And we had to do the extension. This is our interpretation of an uh, of an extension of this this building. I always use the same joke. I mean, this is our family, you know, this building, this building here, the villa. And we are the new member of this family. And of course, we knew that we had to be specific in this place. Okay, well, I'm going to repeat it very quick, but we had the inputs about the close, the context. We knew that. Uh, I mean, something that you, f you feel when you go to the place is that uh, the brief, something that we felt was that the brief was wrong. I mean, the client wanted to put a lot of volume, a lot of surface over the ground here and achieve a good relationship with our family would be difficult. So we had the input about what to do outside. We, we knew that we wanted to, to find a balance within the context as the villa had. I mean, the, the villa had a perfect equilibrium between the, the garden, the building, the over garden at the back. Because when you visit the building, you don't know exactly what's, more, what's the main element. It's the garden of the villa. And we had in mind that we should do the same. We should keep this balance, this natural balance. And we wanted to do it. And we wanted to do it using tools that could be specific, using the tool somehow of the geometry, because we wanted to achieve, we wanted to have a link with the villa. And we, using this tool of the ornament. That's why this elevation is composed with, this, with these elements. So we wanted to use the same tools than the villa itself. And this was to be specific for us. And we used this reference because, well, most of us, we use the same references, of course. And, but I think in this case makes sense because, I mean, well, this, big, this painting is fantastic, you know, but they decided to, to, to do the painting facing once, one to each other with with this difference, no, they didn't want to be at the same at the same painting. They wanted to be independent, but they wanted to have a direct relationship between both. And we wanted to do the same with the buildings. We didn't want to touch the villa. We didn't want to be the same, but we wanted to have this direct relationship. But they are completely different, and we are completely different because we wanted to have our our own identity. So this is the villa. Of course, it's very well known because of Suntour's intervention. We, we had to, to remove the, the bridge, sorry. I mean, I, I, know that, I know that it's a masterpiece, but we had to do it. We wanted to be independent. We didn't want to, 
to have this kind of link. This is the kind, I mean, it's amazing. There are Sphinx when you enter the building. I mean, who can, I mean, in these days with all the conflicts that we have, at the middle of Kur, we can discover Sphinx when you enter the building, the museum, and it's, it's fantastic. Or you can have this kind of Greco-Roman sculptures here. And this is our identity. And of course, it's an element that tries to explore this idea that I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, describe now, that is this idea of autonomy that I told you before. I mean, the building, what we try to do here is try to propose something with meaning by itself. I mean, I can't imagine the building in another place. I can't imagine the building just as a model. And I think the building could express somehow our intentions. But of course, it's a, it's a building that belongs to this place because works, from my point of view, in the right way with the context, is composed and is made with the tools that we achieve at this place, but at the same time tries to go, tries to go beyond this direct relationship, tries to express some kind of autonomy. And I think that in our work, that's really important nowadays, try to explore this idea. What we did, well, but you have to go yeah, back here. How we did this? As I told you, the brief, from our point of view, was wrong. The brief pur proposed to build as much as possible outside. We had some discussions during the competition about what, how to do this, but we decided to forget the brief. We decided to move the museum underground and to keep outside just uh, the main entrance, some public uses, and some spaces for the pedagogic uses and, and a workshop here. And we decided because we felt free to do it. And we felt free because, not, that's why I'm not joking. We felt free because we won Lausanne first. So, <laughs> so we had the feeling that we could be free. This is important because when you do competitions, sometimes you don't feel free to propose things because you have the pressure of, pressure of winning, fulfilling all the conditions. And in this case, we didn't have this, this feeling. We felt free to propose what we thought that was, right, that was right. And to have that opportunity is very, is, is, is very important. I mean, sometimes the work of an architect is like this movie, this Woody Allen's movie, no? This last scene of Match Point. The movie is Match Point, no? And you can see how the player fails the last shot and everything changes because everything, everybody is going to discover that he is the killer. And sometimes in your career, this is going to happen. In this case, our last shot was a winner because we felt free to propose something that wasn't, wasn't proposed at the brief. And we decided to move the museum underground because we understood that the museum was a neutral background for the artworks. We didn't want to impose how to use the museum in this case. We didn't want to impose an atmosphere for us, the most important thing in a museum are the artworks. And we decided to keep out over the ground just the public spaces. And we wanted to be specific, really. And we decided when somebody enters the building thinking that they just did a box, a concrete box outside without any relationship with the context, when you enter the building, what you see is Villa Planta. We wanted to frame Villa Planta because without this background, everything would fail. I mean, without this background, the building would be just a nice object. And we wanted to express the importance of the persistence because this is the main building at this museum, not ours. And inside, 
the building is very simple. It's composed with this idea of geometry as, as a Palladian villa. We wanted to explore how to organize the museum using the same tools than Villa Planta. Because when you move through Villa Planta, you feel this idea of geometry. You can feel the axis. You can feel the importance of the staircases. We use the same tools. You can see somehow this axiary. You can explain this to the citizens, of course, to the visitors, but they can feel it. And this is our work, transmit things again. They can feel when they move around the buildings. Well, I didn't ask. But I feel, I hope they can feel it, that somehow both buildings are linked because they move in the same way through these spaces. And inside, of course, we explore this idea of somehow simplicity. Well, you know that nothing is simple in Switzerland. I mean, this is very complex at the end. <laughs> Catherine knows is much better than me, but I mean, we wanted to show that things can be simple and somehow um, natural, because uh, we wanted to propose just, and we wanted to investigate just simple ideas at the exhibition spaces. I mean, we were conscious that we were doing something on the ground. So if you ask me, the main idea here was just to achieve the right proportion and the right way to play with the artificial light. Because uh, working on the ground, if you fail with these two elements, uh, this would be a very oppressive atmosphere. And underground, we just wanted to have the best exhibiting space. And this is what we propose inside. And when you move inside, no, well, this is the second floor, third floor. No. Sorry, I, I, I'm having troubles with this. Well, this is, yeah, this is the third floor. This is the, up, the second floor, sorry. This is the an exhibiting space that we have at the upper floor. But I wanted to come back to the underground legal. Oh, this is the detail. When yeah, when you move crossing the exhibiting spaces, somehow you can feel some, as I told you, some relationship with this building. And th this is why we imposed ourselves some some rules. Because when you do something, you need to impose some conditions and some internal requirements and we decided to play in a strong way with this idea of geometry and we decided to put this limit of the square try to condense the course as in Villa Planta try to work with this idea of axillary as I told you trying to achieve these links with with the villa because the villa I, I, I truly believe it's true is is the main building in this museum and this is how the place, how, how the space works inside. Again, this idea of the neutral background for the ex, for the artworks. And outside, I don't know what happens. And this is the temporal exhibition spaces, just an empty space that could be composed as the user wants, and both cores. These are, this is the temporal exhibition space. This is just a, a play of scale, proportions, and artificial light. Here. Well, and outside, this is the relationship. You need to have in mind this reference I showed you at the beginning, no? Are completely different. Are composed facing ones, one to each other. And everyone has its own identity. And we wanted to explore this idea. And we did it through, I'm gonna show you a detail today because we are at Bon Mister. Normally I don't, I don't show the details because you can criticize all these details. But I mean, um, I, I wanted to show you this element. This element is a simple concrete element. It's a, it's a kind of tile. Could you go forward? Yeah, this is this, this element. No? We wanted to explore this idea of ornament. Villa Planta was full of ornament. And we wanted to do it because we wanted to establish the same kind of relationship with, with the extension. 
and we use these simple pills. And if we come back to this idea of go beyond to be just a specific and go beyond this idea of a good relationship with the context, we want it to be somehow autonomous and we wanted to propose something that could belong to all places. And if you have in mind this element, you can establish references with things and places that you like or you, see, or you have seen. For example, the truth is that when we did this, we have in mind these uh, Frangio Wright houses at Los Angeles, for example, this per Columbine um, works that he did, you now always working with these concrete blocks, for example. Something that relates your work with things unexpected somehow, but that permits to establish relationship between your work and places and works that you have in mind, but that permits to activate your thinking about the architecture. And we wanted to do that. Sounds a, a little bit pretentious, but somehow we like, I like this comparison with, with a painter. I am always surprised with, every, for example, everybody understands the impressionism, you know? And if you imagine an impressionist, the painter, painting all of the same landscape during different seasons, during his whole life, working at a local scale, they can transmit things that are universal somehow. And everybody likes these impressionist paintings, even if they are completely um, apart of, of the landscape, of the context. They, they can feel somehow what the painter wanted to transmit. Sounds pretentious, but, but I think that our challenge as architects would be the same. Would we try to transmit things that even without the, the, the local knowledge of something, even without these this local inputs, could be understood by people, by citizens, by the users, as something universal. And in this sense, we want to propose things that could be understood as universal. And in this case, we explored this idea of the ornament. That, of course, is just a tool. It's something that we like. It's something that we can't justify. But as you, as you know, in architecture, you can't justify everything you do. Even when we insist that we can, but it's not possible. I mean, it is something that we always discuss at the, at the schools. I mean, the history of architecture is made of discussions trying to justify something that you can't. And we just liked this way of work here with these concrete blocks that can establish a relationship with something that go, goes beyond the local, but establish relationships with something local too, because this is part of our family. So you can see somehow how the family works with different languages, but with something common. And this is the aim that we have when we work in places that we don't know as core but places that we try to understand as architects. The third project I'm gonna show you is, is, well, this is not an extension, this is the Fine Arts Museum in Lausanne. I mean, we won this competition in 2011, it was an international competition, and, well, this is not Lausanne, this is London, but uh, I like this picture <laughs> I, I like a lot this picture because permits me to establish, permits me to start with with the conversation about this this word public. I mean, this is the Economist. No, oh, this this well done. And no, oh. yeah, everybody knows this picture, no, but. This one is the same Syria, but I think it's, this is better. No, this is how they could do um, a huge element, a huge building, almost an, a monument, and they could fit this this building here within the city as an anonymous building here. 
just exploring this idea of public space. No? And I think, I think that, that that's why this is a masterpiece. No? Not just, well, everything is masterpiece here, but I mean, this idea how to compose a public space within the city and how to understand that you are just another liar here, you know, playing with the same tools, made this, this building a real, real mass masterpiece. Well, <laughs> this is not a masterpiece, but, <laughs> but well, I'm gonna try to describe you the first time we, we visit uh, Lausanne. We went to the visit in Lausanne. I mean, it was the day that the client explained the brief, and we went to visit this site uh, with, I don't remember, 40, 50 people, 50 architects visiting, trying to understand everything, trying to, to understand how Lausanne was working. And we were very scary, because I mean, it was the first competition we did in Switzerland, we were surrounded by famous people and we didn't know anything about Lausanne. And while well, the client proposed to keep this pre-existence, this is the, the old factories where they did the maintaining of the trains. And they proposed, at the brief, they proposed to do something with this building, um, doing here the Fine Arts Museum, and then propose a master plan for the Photography Museum and the, the Decorative Arts Museum. So they wanted to, to do a master, master plan of three, three buildings, but the, the star, the icon was, was the, the Fine Arts Museum. And they wanted to keep this, this building. And this is what we proposed, finally. We proposed here the Fine Arts Museum. This is the Photography Museum, and this is the Decorative Arts Museum. Well, now they have organized a competition for this, for both buildings, won by Iris Mateus. So we are doing the Fine Arts Museum, and Iris Mateus, they are doing this. Both buildings that, well, this has changed, and now this is just one, one building. But you, you can see that this master plan is just a composition of three simple elements. And what we proposed was, this space here. So, coming back to the first time we went to visit Lausanne, this was the building, you know? And something that, well, we were working a lot at this competition, and something that I need to tell you is that, um, well, we do competition, but we suffer a lot doing competitions. We, we don't win all the competitions we do. It, I mean, we, we lost nine of 10, so we are normal people in this sense. And, and we were working like three months at this site, and we wanted to do something with this building. So we tried the truth. We tried to be Herzog de Merwan, putting something over the building. We tried to be Rem Colas, putting in a strange object here. We tried to be Soto de Moura, working with the corners and being very careful with everything because we were working in Switzerland. We tried to reproduce as much as possible all the inputs that we had around us. The problem was that most of these guys were working with us at this competition where we could repeat again the same solutions in this, in this sense. And I remember the day when Fabrice and me were discussing about what to do and we remember the first time we visited the site. And something that we remember was that nobody knew anything about this site. Everybody was surprised about this. Well, everybody was telling, well, this is huge. This is at the middle of the city. This is whatever, no? Everybody was surprised about this. And this place is at the heart of the city. Or well, the heart, of course, there is always the problem with the trains, no? But this is just, this is the train station, and this is the plot. So what we decided was to reflect about the city itself. We, we didn't find a way to propose something really awesome, something really very expressive, working with the building, that, with the existence. And we realized that what's most, for us, in this case, was most more important to work with the city 
understand that your work is always related with the city and understand that your responsibility as architect is first with the city and then with your objects. Then we decided again to forget the building and propose something that we had in mind that is, this is uh, the UVT Gallery. The UVT Gallery is amazing because it's, an, it's a urban space that you can cross and where you can feel that you are surrounded by art. You can see the gallery, you can see the people, you can feel the culture somehow. And in Lausanne, they have this opportunity. You can propose a public space surrounded by three museums. But there are few places in Europe, or few places in the world where you can feel that. And we wanted to reproduce that. And, and, and even we tried to copy the proportions because, because we didn't try to fail. We, we didn't want to fail. So we were testing the proportions of the Uffizi Gallery, the height of the buildings, because we didn't want to fail with this. But when we did this, we discovered that our buildings were just backgrounds as the Uffizi Gallery. The Uffizi Gallery is a, is a rhythm of windows. The Uffizi Gallery is not trying to impose anything. It's just composing something. And we just wanted to compose any space. If you ask me nowadays, I think Fabrizio would say the same. We would prefer to, to do iconic voids than iconic buildings. I mean, we proposed this. And the buildings were just three, act, three secondary actors, three neutral backgrounds, and then just try to protect this space from the train station, from the dust, from the noise. Try to, it's something that tries to compose, again, through our obsessions, but tries to compose just in a square. Because nobody knew anything about this place. And our responsibility was to rediscover the city and look back to the city. And this is how the building appears, just like an element composed with the tools that you can, or the characters that you can find at the place where you work. This idea of rhythm, try to work with this, this industrial mood that you can feel in, well, that you can feel in Lausanne. But we have a problem. We had a problem. Well, probably we have it. <laughs> but we have this problem of the persistence. We wanted to be specific. I mean, we were discussing about specificity during five, six years, so we couldn't forget it. And we were proposing to demolish the persistence. I mean, the persistence was not so important. The value by itself as architecture was not so important. This was. I mean, this is what we felt when we saw the building. But we didn't want to delete the memory of the site. So we decided to keep some elements that somehow could transmit that we are just another layer. Of course, we kept, uh, this is a singular volume. This is a window facing to the south. And we kept some elements that could activate somehow this idea of memory. Because the memory, I'm convinced that the memory is stronger than the physical fact. I mean, nobody knew anything about this building. Nobody could remember in Lausanne how the building was. But everybody remembered that there was a building there. So we wanted to show that there was somebody before us there. And we wanted to express it through our architecture. Because without this element, probably, and other elements that are characterized in the site, everything would be completely different. Look into the square, the building is composed with this neutral, this neutral language of windows, trying to activate as much as possible the ground floor, and just composing this, this, yeah, this kind of housing, you know, looking to the square. And the ground floor is, is comp yeah, it's composed again with, with all the public uses facing to the square, trying to understand that this is a public square. But when you enter the building, probably you are going to discover that there was something before you. And this was the window that was characterizing this, this persistence. 
And we wanted to show that somehow this was important, even more important than us, and that we are just another step. That's why the main foyer is composed, focusing the attention about their pre-existence, trying to activate the memory of the site, but forgetting the physical fact of the building that was here. Of course, you can't use, you, you can do that every time you, you work in a place. But in this case, we thought that he has, this had a justification, we could do it. The building, the building is, it's simple in terms of composition. I mean, just again, our work of playing with the proportion, with this idea of light. Oh, please. Just trying to explore this idea of three-dimensional space and trying to understand the museum uh, as a classical gallery. We didn't want to, we felt that we didn't need to explore a new typology of museum. If you have in mind the classical galleries, this works on the same way. And we organized everything around this element, the main element of the persistence, putting all the main staircases here. I understand that the museum is just a sequence of spaces devoted to artworks. And then we are just not secondary players, but yes, just architects because the main decision was outside, not inside the building. This, for example, is the temporary exhibition spaces no? and how everything is composed around this element and how the building is just like a barrier. It's like, it's like the track of the train. It works in the same way, this idea of reading. Of course, there are a lot of tricks and there are a lot of elements that I, know I, I can't explain now, but the main idea, as I told you before, was focusing the attention about this space and not about the building. Well, this is a render about how, how the <laughs> temporary exhibition spaces are composed, working with the light uh, at, the, at, the, at the rooftop. And this is how, well, the site works. I mean, the picture is very bad, but I mean, I like, so I, this is a, it's, it's, it's very small. I like the attitude of this element. This is like a Moai in Pasqua. I mean, I'm a small, but the attitude of, of the preexistence is stronger than the whole city. And, and that's, that's why I like this picture. And everything is because of preexistence. And everything is because of the, the city. And the building is just an element that makes the transition between boats. And the last one, I'm in time. <laughs> the, the last one is the Tanz House. Uh, the Tanz House is, is, is the third project that we are doing in Switzerland. It was another competition. And it's smaller, but it's amazing. This, this. Well, it's just here. I mean, most of you should know this. This, this, this the, the bath area is just close to the limit. And this, this area, so I, I Something that I love in Zurich is this mix of things. I mean, Zurich for me is a kind of contradiction. You, know, if you can see uh, this part of the city of bankers, who, I mean, insurance companies and on and so on. No? All this, this part of the city is mixed somehow with this, I think you, you call it here rough chick, no? something like this. I mean, this rough atmosphere that you can transform in something chic, or you like it. And I, I, I like, in this area, I like this mix of elements. No? Here you can see the bridge for the trains. I mean, this industrial mood that you still can perceive here, new elements that are appearing here. I mean, and this is, this is the building of the Tanz House. And this is our plot. We're here. This is a housing that we have at the back. And this was, now this is gonna be in our elemental school. Well, this is our context. So we didn't have clear rules as in sketching or as in cool, probably, to, to play with, with the context. We didn't have inputs in this sense. But we knew that somehow 
we should play again with this idea of if, if you visit this site, you, you can perceive, of course, the constraints of the people when they want to cross this space. It's full of activity, but I mean, you perceive in a clear way the problems with the public space here. This is something that happens around the limit in different places, but here is, is was very clear for us. And we just reflected about this idea of public space with this building. And, and I show it at the, at the end of the lecture, because it explores a little bit what we try to do at the office nowadays. I mean, we have talked about public, we have talked about the specificity, we have talked about um, how to be somehow, if you admit the, the word uh, universal or how to be autonomous. We have talked about how to find equilibrium between specificity and autonomy of the form. But we feel that in this case, and now at, uh, with the things that are running now at the office, we feel that we need to do it trying to um, condense even more what we do in few gestures, as I told you, trying to find something primal or something primitive somehow. We try to be primitive with things we do. Primitive in the sense of uh, discover again the fundamentals of your work. Discover the things by its essentiality and not by the meaning that you are adding always. And in, in, at the Tanz House, we try to do it, trying to compose a building that could somehow solve just a section, because this building just tries to solve how to connect uh, the path close to the limit with the street, I can pronounce it, Wasserberg Strass that we have here, how to solve this link, how to solve the connection between the levels of the school, the town's house, the relationship with the house, how to activate this public space. We wanted to propose the best way to solve this node, but we wanted to do it trying to condense the gestures, trying to condense our expression as architects, trying to be essential somehow. And we propose this. That, of course, we can discuss about this. You can like it or not, because this is just a language. For me, for us, of course, I like the triangles, like we did in stitching. Of course, it's an obsession. It's something personal. It's something filtered by our obsessions. And you could have your own obsessions here. That's why architecture is so interesting, because there are not just one truth. There are thousands of truths. And that's why it's so interesting. But our obsession here was not the triangle. Our obsession was to solve this just with two walls. Because the building, I would like to spend the building in the near future telling to the architects or telling to myself that we did it just with two simple walls. Two simple walls that are based in, his comp in its composition, thinking about the mood or the character of the place, thinking about the rhythm of the train, of the bridge of the train, thinking about the repetition of an element that you can discover around this, this, uh, around this context, and thinking that your building is going to be always filtered through something more important than you, that are the trees. And your building appears like a secondary actor here, trying to be very expressive, trying to put in relation this building with something that takes you to another place. You can see this triangle and you can reflect about different places. But this is specific because it's the same element that you can read here if you, you look at this element with, with more, more intensity. And it's something that is composed just with these two walls. And it's something that reflects about how to touch the ground because we were doing a dance school. And if you think about what's a dance school, it's a place where they show you, they teach you how to touch the ground. So this is stupid uh, obsession for us as architects makes sense when we see this with, when they see this wall. 
how to touch the ground was the most important thing for us when we proposed this world, because it was a dance school. And the rhythm made sense with the atmosphere. And the triangle made sense because of the shadow. So we wanted to be essential in this sense. And of course, the building is, is this composition of, I mean, now this has changed, but this is a composition of these two elements that tries just to propose a public space. And we use the program to justify this. Because as architect, do you need to justify this? You need to fulfill all the conditions and requirements that you have inside the building. And of course, in this case, I think we did it in a good way, but this was not the most important thing. We didn't want to investigate somehow new ways of explore the, the concert hall, well, the, the hall that we have here, or how to how to organize the offices or how to organize whatever. We didn't want to impose a way of use the building inside. We just wanted to propose the best element that could relate our obsessions with the city and do it in an essential way. And this is something that for us is very important nowadays. Try to be essential in the sense that we need to condense as much as possible our gestures as architects. Not because we are minimals, uh, mi minimals. We are not interested about minimums. Not because we are in Zurich and we have to use concrete, no. That, I mean, this is something trendy too, I understand it. But this is not the fact for us. The fact is try to feel that all what we do has meaning by itself and has meaning because we can eliminate all the superficial elements that we used to add when we work in a place. This is how the concrete walls are composed, how the, this element works. Well, these are technical, technical things going around the, the windows. And this is how the building appears, this composition of, of walls. Of course, as I told you before, with this sentiment-based relationship, based just in things we feel or we feel that are going to work but with mainly that we like and this is how we imagine this this the main foyer looking to the pathway working with the shadows the triangles just showing the simplicity of this space well have been a little bit a mess but um, these are the things that we have in mind when we work. And it's important for me to explain it in this way, because, I mean, I, I don't know if, uh, if there, there are students or not here, but I, I, I would tell you that you need to have in mind that when we do something without meaning, I mean, why we have these obsessions, or why we discuss about this, why we discuss about words, because if you don't find the meaning of your work, everything is going to be for nothing, finally. Even if the object is nice, even if the work, even if the shape works, even if the client is happy, without a real meaning for you, probably in 10, 15 years, it's going to fail. And our responsibility as architects, with the work we do, is to survive with the works we do. Because we do things that need to survive because this would permit to find the link between past, present, and future. And this is why it's so important for us to reflect about these concepts. Thank you. Yes, uh, Alberto Vega. Thank you so much for this uh, very profound uh, lecture. We learned a lot about your project, about your attitude of work. That was really impressive. <clears throat> and uh, well, we know you are really in a rush these days and it was difficult for you to manage to come here. So a really special thank that you managed finally to, to do it. And uh, well, you, you deserve a little 
present. I, I know it's a cliche, <laughs> it's a, but it's a very specific yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> product from the area. So I hope or you like it or your no, like <laughs> do like it as well. So and uh, I hope you can stay with us a little bit for yeah. the opera that we are going to have on the other hand side. And uh, I also would like to welcome everybody once again here at the Baumusterzentrale. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you.